Hey guys, Tommy here with TFL Classics, and I've been so excited for this day because we've got two Subarus, an old one and a new one, and we are gonna compare them off-road in the Rocky Mountains to see which one is better when the going gets tough. Right here we have our very own 1978 Subaru DL four-wheel drive. This is a great, 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 great grandfather to the other car. <laughs> and right here is my personal car that my wife and I purchased. This is a 2015 Subaru Outback all-wheel drive. The little blue shoebox you see behind me was one super significant car here in the United States because it was really the first ever mass-produced four-wheel drive station wagon. It wasn't a Jeep, it wasn't a truck, it wasn't a huge gas-guzzling SUV. This was an affordable, everyday car with four-wheel drive. Now that new Subaru has a lot of marketing behind it that claim it's very off-road worthy. It's got a bunch of cool modes on it we'll talk about. It's got cladding. But here's the question. Has Subaru actually made them more off-road worthy in 40 years of development? Is the new one actually better off-road than the old one? Because the marketing sure claims it is. Coming up this week on the Fast Lane Car, we take this car, the brand new electric mini, up the world's toughest electric car test. Over at TFL Truck, we take the brand new Nissan Titan and find out how well it tows. Then over at TFL Now, yeah, we bought a new car and oh my God, it is a hot mess. And finally on Classics and TFL Off-Road, more at home editions where we showcase your rides. The old one looks like it's perpetually surprised by something. It's just constantly, <gasps> look at the face. What is this face? Why are you so astonished by everything? It's fine, it's fine. There's no reason to be so open-eyed. You're gonna be okay. <gasps> this is our first little test. It's a really short, but really steep hill climb. Let's see what happens when we take the new one and then the old one up it. Guys, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm not overly confident. Uh, this is a great car in general for foul weather, but climbing this hill, oof, I don't know. We are now maybe going to see the Achilles heel of the new Subarus, the CVT. And if you notice in the lineup, the manual transmission is kind of dying. The Legacy is no longer available in the manual, the Outback is no longer available in the manual, the Forester is no longer available in the manual. So they're kind of being replaced by the contingency variable, which is great for efficiency, but tends to give up the ghost off-road. Let's see what happens up this hill. I don't have a really good approach angle or breakover angle or departure angle. And, uh, oh, okay, it's CBT, uh, all right. All right, not bad. So symmetrical all-wheel drive worked on the first try. I wasn't articulating too much, but I gave it some more gas and it figured it out. I heard the traction system come on. Let's see what the old one will do. <laughs> All right, Andre's laughing at my horn. I'm gonna take the same route up this hill as he did. All right, let's see what Tommy can do. Come on, little guy, come on. Oh. What? Okay, that was two wheel drive. Let me engage four wheel drive. Please work, we've never tried it, so hopefully. Hopefully it works. I've never actually given it a whirl. Oh yes, look at that! Good job, little Subaru! I cannot believe it, he didn't even pause for a second! You scampered right up that, nice work! The old wee little Subaru here has a Boxer 4, just like the new one. <laughs> but it is absolutely minuscule. It starts here, and ends here. It's a 1.6 liter, a whopping 67 horsepower. In fact, the most impressive thing about this engine bay is a big old full-size spare that lives underneath the hood. How wild is that? This is a 2.5 liter Boxer four-cylinder engine with 175 horsepower. So the power level is almost three times as much as in the old car. But the spare tire on the new Outback is a space saver. What the heck, Subaru? What if I get a flat out on the trail? Whew, that would be a real bummer. 
I've been underselling the capability of these old Subarus on purpose, just so I don't scare Andre. Because while these cars may not have special X modes or plastic cladding on the side, these little guys go just about everywhere because they are incredibly lightweight. This weighs under 2,000 pounds, super lightweight and also super small. And that's a big advantage because it means I can pick my way through the trail. I can avoid the big holes and the big rocks and the big pits and just go where I want. And you can't do that in modern cars because they've gotten so darn wide. Now, what about the four wheel drive system? Well, it's very basic. And basic is what you want off road because it's simple. Let me explain the difference between this system and what Andre has in that newer Outback. Now the old Subaru has a very rudimentary system. This is a four wheel drive system. And in order to understand how it works, you have to understand something kind of peculiar. When you go around a corner, the front wheels and the rear wheels actually spin at different speeds. And if you ever drive kind of a long vehicle or a bus, you'll notice they have to kind of go wide before they can turn. And that's because the back wheels tend to cut the corner, which means that if you lock them together, some bad stuff is going to happen on the pavement. Now, the way that Subaru got around that in 1978 was through a four wheel drive system. 98% of the time driving that car every day in right pavement, it acts like a front wheel drive car because it is a front wheel drive car. The rear wheels just sit here doing nothing. They just dangle. And then when you hit some ice or snow or rocks or mud, you pull a lever and lock it into four wheel drive. So now in four wheel drive, the front and the rear spin at the exact same speed. But it's very important that the second you get back on the dry pavement, you flick that lever back into front wheel drive or it'll start to crab and bind going around corners. What about the new system? Well, Andre's Outback has something called active torque split all wheel drive. And this is a full time system. So unlike a four wheel drive system where you actually have to engage it, the all wheel drive system is active all the time. And in order to get around our turning issue, Subaru actually includes a set of clutches in the center of the vehicle that allow a differential in speed between the front and the rear wheels. The car will sense your off-road when you stick it in X mode and it will start to bind up these clutches so you have more power that is distributed equally front and back. In the old system, you have two open differentials front and rear. So if the left front gets stuck in a hole and the right rear gets stuck in a hole, you're not gonna be making any forward momentum. The new Subaru also has that issue if you have opposite wheels stuck in a hole, these are also open differentials. These are also going to spin, but modern systems have wheel speed sensors, which then can apply brakes to this wheel and force power to the wheel with traction. This system operates a lot more like a modern day full size or heavy duty pickup truck. The other thing this car has too is tiny wheels and big sidewalls. This is 13s. That's right. 13 inch wheels. That is absolutely nothing at all. And it means that they can stick a fairly tall tire on this car, which gives it a good ride off road. Now for the stuff you really want to hear about off road technology and the old 1978 model does have loads of it. There's a lever here that engages four wheel drive. That is the end of the list of the off-road tech in the old Subaru. This car has something called X-Mode. It does not use a low-range transfer case or lockers or sway bar disconnects. It's basically all computer-based. Uh, well, let's see if it works. All right, this is the Tombstone Hill, and there goes our camera rig, the LR3, in its highest suspension setting in low range. And this is a properly steep hill. It's hard to show on camera. But Tombstone has really challenged some vehicles in the past just because it's very loose and it's very steep. Now, Andre and I are both kind of compromised. See, I have a manual transmission, which is good off-road. However, without a low range transfer case and only a small amount of power, I'm going to have to really bury my foot into it. Andre has a CVT. We have two sides of the test here. We've got a really steep and loose side and a slightly less steep but very articulated bumpy side. We're going to start with the steeper, looser side, and then if both cars can make it up, we'll try the more rock crawly section. I have engaged X mode. I'm going to use every tool available to me. I'm going to leave it in manual shift mode and first gear, uh, simulated gear, 
since this is a CVT, it's kind of a it's basically a belt driven transmission. And of course, my tires are not great. These are all seasons. Ooh, I can tell the traction control system is working overtime. I can hear it. And okay, okay, come on, car, you can do it. You're moving still. Come on, my foot is on the floor, guys. I'm, I buried the foot, and the car is barely moving. Okay, now it's accelerating. Good, good, good. Okay, better. It finally found traction. <laughs> okay, so not super comfortable, but uh, I did it. All right, here we go up the hill in the 78 Subaru. I am so excited for this. Now, I do have my four-wheel drive engaged. Speaking of gearing, Andre did that pretty well, but he was foot to the floor at one point. He didn't have a lot more to give. And he also took it nice and slow. I can't really take it that slow, even though I'd like to, because I have a manual transmission. They did something interesting with this car. With the four-wheel drive station wagons, they shortened first and second gear, which should make it better for this kind of stuff. But with a carburetor at 9,000 feet above sea level, I fear I'm still gonna have to give it some welly. Come on, little Subaru. Oh yes, here we go. Oh yeah. Woo, I've got underbody protection, so unlike Andre, if I hit a rock, I'm gonna be just fine. Oh, we're almost there. Come on, little guy, foot to the floor. Foot to the floor, you're almost there. Keep going, keep going, keep going, yes! Oh, awesome little car. What a monster, it's so lightweight that I was able to just bound right up that. Woo! We're gonna go up the harder side now. It's articulated, it's still very steep, it's got some big rocks in it. Initially, I thought the new Outback had a lot more clearance than the old one, but take a look at this. It's not till you peek underneath that you realize just how much space there is between the ground and the body. This suspension really is set up to take a lot of abuse. So whereas Andre is gonna have to take the rock crawling section slow as to not puncture an oil pan or tear something out of like the fuel tank, I can just scramble my way up it. That's the hope. Everything is tucked up underneath the vehicle. I have a skid plate for the oil pan, a big metal one. And you'll also notice tow hooks, two tow hooks in the front versus none in the front of that new Subaru because that's all just plastic shielding. And trust me, rock versus plastic, the plastic's not gonna win. Two more recovery points in the rear for a total of four on the whole vehicle. This is like Jeep Wrangler Rubicon levels of recovery points except they're not painted red, so I'm not sure we can trust them. But in all seriousness, take a look at how high up mounted this fuel tank is. You need a step ladder to reach this fuel tank, so it's gonna be safe from rocks, and it even has a spark arrestor on the tailpipe because this little guy has a nasty habit of backfiring at the weirdest times. It's a similar story in the back of the new Subaru, just a lot of plastic. Now, there is a screw and eyelet hole in case this thing has to be pulled up onto a tow truck, but it's not a proper recovery point. If you yank on that too hard, it will break. Luckily, Andre did install a tow hitch on the back of this guy, so we do have some options. But from the factory, not a whole lot else going on back here either. The old Subaru here has a GVWR of 3110, 3,110 pounds, but the car only weighs about 1,900 pounds, which means if you do quick math, the payload is about 1,200 pounds, which is better than the newer one. I'm heading down. I am engaging X mode and hill descent is helping me a little bit. I can hear the ABS working, slowing me down. So that's actually not too bad. I do not have hill descent control. I have something better, a manual transmission and a fairly low first gear. All right, just kidding, not that low, but I can just release the clutch and let the vehicle kind of crawl its way down. They don't have to ride the brakes. It's maintaining, what, one or two miles an hour and I'm not touching the brake. What a little beast. God, this thing is so fun. It just such, puts, puts such a big smile on my face. Andre, move that precious little outback. You're going so slowly. I know you don't want to tear out your front plastic chin, but geez, let's give it some beans. The old Subaru is a station wagon. It's a classic Subaru design that dates back all the way to the 1970s, and it's pretty roomy. And take a look at this. The seat folds down, it's a rear bench. Whoa! Andre, unbelievable power lift gate. 
This is also a big trunk and the seats also fold flat in this vehicle. You can pull a handle. Ooh, and now it's automatic. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, this is the bigger trunk. So if we get really lost and have to live in the cars, I'd probably rather live in the new one. But what about outside dimensions? The size comparison is pretty comical, but I'm gonna do a TFL patented hug test. Let's try this. Let's see if I can hug the new car. It's much wider, it's taller, it's longer. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, I, I can barely hug it just right there. All right, let me try the old one. Let me see. Dude, it's much easier to hug this one. Andre, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen on any automotive program. <laughs> what are we proving here? Size matters, on, especially on the trail. All right, so this side is much rougher. It's more articulated, which means the holes are bigger. We've got these sharp, jagged rocks through the middle. This is really gonna push the limits of what the new Outback can do. Here we hear that CVT droning up the hill already. Ooh, jeez. Am I gonna rip my Wowzer. car to shreds? Oh my, jeez. I go dig, Subaru, dig. Uh, I've got, I've got, I've got a hundred percent throttle. Let it spin, car. Just let it spin. Oh, Andre, you're stuck. Oh, he figured it out. Unbelievable. Am I gonna overheat it? I don't know. I just, <laughs> I just hope I don't burn this thing to hell. Okay, okay, I'm doing it, yes. I'm impressed it actually worked. <laughs> that was pretty cool. So what happens is the CVT doesn't want to grenade itself. It doesn't want to put too much heat into itself. So it really limits the amount of torque that actually transfers to the wheels. Oh yes, got it running. All right, little guy, do not let me down. You may be old, you may be a little bit rusty, but you got heart and you got four wheel drive, not all wheel drive. So I'm gonna try taking it slow like Andre did, but I have a feeling that's not gonna work. Oh, it's a little bouncy. All right, here we go. Uh, I can really pick my line here. Oh my god, it's gonna do it. It's gonna do it. Nope, it's not gonna do it. Dang it, I ran out of torque. What torque? Now I ran out of engine. No! All right, classic carburetor there. Very quiet in reverse. This is so fun. I'm having more fun in this old car. I don't care if that new one made it up its first try. I've got such a big smile on my face. This is like the little piggy that could. It's like, wee! Let's keep doing it. And the thing is, is, this car will keep doing it. You were designed for this. Let's do it. Come on, little car. Oh, yes. We got some speed up now. Here we go. Oh. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, I hit something pretty hard there. But that's okay, because she can take it. Woo! All right. I hate abusing classics, but that was fun. Did you see that? He was just hopping like a mountain goat. Just boop, 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 boop. Wow, that's amazing. Subaru has been about value ever since the beginning, and it hasn't changed much. This 2015 Outback cost us about $27,000 brand new. And also Subaru has been known for safety. Their crash ratings are really, really good. And that's why it's one of the more popular cars, especially in the colder climates like Colorado. Safety on the old Subaru is more compromised than the new one. I mean, it does have seat belts. That's a big safety feature. And it also has brakes. And it also has mirrors. Now I am unworthy apparently of using my body parts to show the size of the mirrors because that's Andre's job. Andre, can you can you demonstrate? Here is the older mirror once again mounted on the door, but it's smaller than my hand.
You know, I was super impressed by the new Subaru today. I really didn't think it would do that. Credit where credit's due. But I kind of feel like we're comparing an iPhone to a Nokia here. The iPhone is much more technologically advanced. It's much more sophisticated. But it's also a lot less durable, because even though that old Subaru DL, the Nokia, will only make phone calls, it will make phone calls till the end of time. That little DL would have done that hill 25 more times, beating the crap out of it. And I'm not sure the new Subaru would take that same amount of abuse. As always, this has been Tommy and Andre with the Fastlane car and the Fastlane truck and the Fastlane classics. Head over to TFLcar.com for the latest and greatest in new versus old reviews. If you need more proof that the Subaru Outback is king in Colorado's mountain towns, there you go, there's one. This is a tiny little town of Gold Hill in the Rocky Mountains. Let's see if we can find more. There's another one up there, a newer Forester. Volvo, that's not a Subaru. Uh, let's see what else, okay, there we go. There's a Forester and an Impreza. What else do we have down here? Looks like we've got another Outback. Yep, there's an Outback. There's Andre's same generation. Uh-huh. And then we've got a Forester. Yep. And then we have two more Subarus there. Thank you, appreciate it. Two more Outbacks there. I think we've seen almost every generation of Outback up here. We're still missing the mid-2000s though. Well, we've got an Impreza up here and a Forester. Uh, yeah, we're just missing one or two of them, but we've seen almost every edition of Outback ever made. Oop, another Impreza, uh, another Outback. There's like a 2011 through 2012 Outback maybe, right about there. Yeah, Subarus in Colorado are everywhere. No new ones though, I haven't seen the new Outback today.